Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome to a very exciting tutorial for Sure Target 2, our new advanced camera animation tool for After Effects. Now, we do have an early version of Sure Target. So if you check out the tutorial section, tutorial number 82 and 83 both talk about Sure Target. And it's a preset that you use on a null object. And uh, it's a cool preset, and uh, you should check it out just so you kind of get an idea of uh, what this is all about. And there's some cool tips for uh, creating that animation. And also, just for a primer, you may want to check out tutorial number 54 on the advanced camera tips. So you really want to understand how the camera works inside of After Effects. But you can also make it a lot better and a lot easier if you use SureTarget 2. So what we did is we upgraded it. We added a few new features. We made it a plugin so it's easier and smarter. And we just did some cool stuff. We made it more logical, so hopefully you won't forget how to use it. Now, well, speaking of forgetting, we've got a story here. And uh, it's a true story, and it's the first one of 2010, so, uh, you know, let's make it good. That's well, not very good, but here it is. So the other night, uh, me and my wife were getting ready to watch a movie, and uh, she wanted to see if her sister called her on her cell phone or something, I don't know, something very important, I'm sure. And so we were looking for her cell phone and we couldn't find it. And we were looking all over and I'm digging through the couch and going all over the place. Well, my wife claims that our daughter was playing with it earlier in the morning. And so maybe she's, you know, stuck it somewhere or destroyed it. Um, we didn't really know. So we've been looking for about 15 minutes all over the place. And then I just stopped and I said, honey, I know where your phone is. And she said, where is it? I said, come with me. So we marched upstairs, went into our bedroom, and uh, we have like a bathroom sink. And there it was right on the counter. So how did I know it was there? Did I put it there? No, I didn't. But here is how I knew. Earlier in the morning, we were both getting ready, and we were kind of in a hurry to uh, get out the door. And I remember looking at her as she was brushing her hair, and I was thinking, you know, I bet you that would go a lot quicker if you weren't also talking on the cell phone. Needless to say, though, I was pretty proud of myself because I was like a futuristic detective that went back in time in my mind to solve the mystery. Um, now, if I could look forward into the future, maybe I could stop some crimes from happening. I would need some sort of precognitive ability, some sort of precognitive ability. And then they could make a movie about me and probably get Tom Cruise involved. Well, in the meantime, let's take a look at Sure Target 2. So here is a basic example of what you can create with this advanced camera animation tool. All right, so there's a lot of new features, and uh, here's another cool example. Okay, so... We're going to go ahead and take a look at these two examples and uh, basically go down the line and check out all the great new features. Okay, to get started, you need to install the SureTarget plugin. So make sure your computer's on and uh, download uh, the project file for this tutorial and then copy the SureTarget plugin into your plugin directory for your After Effects program. So check into uh, your manual. I don't even think they have manuals anymore, but um, look it up. Anyway, once you get that installed, we can then access it using the computer, assuming it's still on. So we'll come over here to this composition that I've set up, and it just has some particles and a gradient. It's really just to make this tutorial look a little nicer, but uh, obviously you can see right through that. Now, when you use Sure Target, you're going to be using it, say, in a blank composition or one where you've already started to design. So either way, here's how you get started. First, we create a new null object. This is going to be the way that SureTarget works. And we just choose Effect, Video Copilot. I always have to say it like that. I can't just say Video Copilot. I'd say Video Copilot. Sometimes when I'm watching movies with my wife, I do the movie trailer voice. She hates it. <laughs> All right, so we'll do, uh, right, SureTarget. And the cool thing about this is it automatically makes the null object three-dimensional, it adds a camera, 
and it parents the camera to the null object all just by applying it to a null. So that's cool. It makes it quick so you can focus on your design and being creative. Um, that is the key. So you can go into the camera settings. You can make some changes. You can make it a little wider, um, any of that good stuff. So we'll hit OK. And the next thing we need to do is create some targets. Now we're going to use text layers, but you can use anything. You could use null objects if it's just motion graphics, but we'll just go ahead, take the text tool, and we'll just click in the composition. We'll just type uh, stop, and we'll add another text, drop, and roll. This is a procedure that you follow if there is an earthquake, I think. So if everything starts shaking, you stop, you drop, and you roll, seemingly to the vibration of the earthquake, I would assume. So we've made these three layers. Now we do need to make them three-dimensional. So we'll just click on the three-dimensional checkbox. And we can move them around in 3D space. But for now, we'll just leave them kind of next to each other. So we'll go to our null object. We can rename it, by the way. If we just hit return, we just type sure target. And uh, here's the plugin. And the best part I'm going to show you right now, check this out. You click on this about button. Bam. Look at that. Sweet little graphic version 2.0.10. It's pretty official. Pretty official right there. Um, anyway, here's what we have to do. We have to set up our targets. So right here we have target layers. And we can go target one, stop, target two, drop, target three, roll. So once you set that up, then we can start animating our camera along to these targets. So here's the basic way sure target works. You keyframe the number. The number is related to the target that you're on. And anything between 1 and 2 is essentially animating to that next target. So we'll move forward. We'll type 2. And if I hit U, we have our two keyframes. The other nice thing is that we've simplified the expression, so when you hit U, there's not a big list of expressions that we've added uh, to be confusing. I decided to sidetrack you with stories during the tutorial to be confusing, so we kind of made up for it there. Um, we move forward, and we just click a keyframe. So this way, we go from 1 to 2. We hold, then we go, and we hit uh, 3. And so with these keyframes, we're going from 1 to 2 to 3, just like that. And this is the basic way that SureTarget works. Now the cool thing is we can move these around anywhere we want. Now that they're designated as targets, we'll just move them around. So go click on the z-axis here, and we'll just slide it forward out of the frame, perhaps. And so it goes all the way to that target, and then back down to roll. We could even take it and rotate it, so I've hit R we can change the rotation. Now remember, sure target works with the rotation, not the orientation. So if you use the rotate tool, make sure you set it from orientation to rotation. But we'll just use the slider down here and uh, we'll just, you know, rotate it a bit. Now, we don't have auto rotate on by default. So what we can do is go in here, turn on auto rotate, and now the camera is going to automatically rotate to the target. Now let me spread these out a bit. So now we have a little bit of time between the two targets. But it's pretty interesting because it automatically animates towards it. Now I'm going to turn on our background design just so we have something to look at. And I'll also change the color of the text. And a cool tip is if you select all the layers, you can just click on the color and uh, they all change at the same time. So OK, let's move that out. And uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, some 3D space here. Now that we have it set up, let's check out some new features. So we've created our animation, and it's set to ease targets. And that basically means that it's going to be smooth out and smooth in as it arrives. But there's a few other modes, such as none. And none will basically use the speed of the keyframes here. So now you could say, hit F9 and add your own curve at that point 
and just give you the flexibility to do it yourself if you want to. There's also an ease out and ease in. So ease out would mean away from the target, it would be slow, and ease in would be slow into the target as it arrives. So we'll go ahead and set it to ease for now. Okay, let's check out the wiggle control. So if we come down here, we can change the wiggle speed to say you know, 0.5 and the wiggle amount to say 40. And if we play this back, you can see the camera kind of moves around as if it's in water or something. So that's the wiggle control. Okay, next we have inertia. And this is a cool way to add a little bit of bounce into your animation. Now here's the key to this. We want to set the ease target mode to ease out. And that way when they're leaving to go to the next target, it'll be slow, but it'll stop immediately when it gets to it, which will allow us to add our inertia because it's calculating the speed at which it arrives. Basically, if we set this to about five and this to about six or seven, here's what we have. Okay, here we go. And we have a little bit of a bounce. Now we can turn the amount up to about 10. Check that out. Now the decay kind of works backwards. A higher number will make it cut off sooner and a lower number like three will make it bounce for a long time. So I like to set it to about eight or so just so that it gives you the motion but isn't messing up your animation. So that's inertia, a very cool way to add just a little bit of life to your animation and uh, just kind of makes it fun. Now the camera roll is a cool feature that emulates the way a jet flies. When it turns, it sort of rolls over to the side that it's turning to. So in this case, it's kind of like being in a car with uh, you know really loose suspension where it kind of you know bounces forward and back. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our roll text and instead of rotating it, I'm just gonna move it over to the side here. So if we go over here, sure target, we'll set the camera roll up, we'll turn it on, and we'll go and set the amount to two. You usually wanna keep it pretty low. If you have a fast animation, keep it down to maybe 0.1 or 0.5. But let's go and take a look at this. So you can see it's just kind of a bouncy animation and uh, play around with the settings and the combinations, uh, a lot of fun. Now we have the auto focus. So this is pretty cool. It basically controls the autofocus of your camera. So we'll turn on focus targets and depth of field. Now the reason that uh, we have it set up this way is that focus targets calculates the focus, but you may want depth of field on, but not necessarily you know, focusing the targets. You may want to pull focus uh, yourself, but in this case, uh, we're just gonna turn it on and it basically automatically calculates the distance from the camera to your target and uh, let's take a look. Now the aperture is a little bit high, so let's turn that down some. And we'll take a look. Now the next feature is called Dolly. And what it does is allows you to change how close a camera is to your target. So we'll turn that on. Now if you notice the stop is pretty small and the drop is pretty small and uh, the roll is pretty small. They're exactly the same size because the camera is exactly the same distance away from my target. So what we can do is turn up the dolly amount so that we can get closer to specific targets. So stop, that's a pretty intense word. So we'll turn the dolly one and make it really close and then it'll interpolate that to the next target, which is set to zero. We're not affecting that. We can even do negative values to be even further away from it. But, you know, we'll move this in a little bit closer, just uh, for the sake of it, and then uh, we'll have it pull out for this one. So basically what it allows you to do is get closer or further away from your target without having to animate your camera. So it's all procedural and it's all automatic. Now in the next example, I'll show you how that works, but here we go. 
Now let's talk about some of the new target features. So right now it's set to 10, but you can go all the way up to 100. And there's a cool feature called auto populate. And what that does is allow you to make your targets added without having to go through the drop down lists and add them one by one. So if you have a lot of them or if you have to rearrange the order or something like that, then you don't have to go through and redo it as cumbersomely. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to go ahead and set the targets to none. And here's how you set up the auto populate feature. Scroll up to the top of the plugin and make sure the sure target name is selected. Hold down control and click on the layers in order that you want to add them into the target list. So stop, drop, roll, scroll down, click on the auto populate button and they automatically get added to the list. Stop, drop and roll. And what if I want to change the order? Well, just go up here to the top, make sure it's selected and reselect your layer. So go roll, stop, drop. Click execute, roll, stop, drop. And the cool thing about this is if you have like 20 of them, you could just easily click through them and add all your targets without having to go through uh, your list. So that's a cool feature. Okay, let's take a look at the next feature, the Create Baked Camera button. Now, here's the thing. Expressions can be very slow. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of calculations going on. And here's the problem. If you have motion blur in your scene, motion blur relies on subframe sampling. So it needs to calculate the expressions at a subframe level, which means one frame could take eight times as long if the motion blur is on. So the solution is to create a baked camera with all of the settings automatically. So what you want to do is set your work area, and that's these two bars here, to the area where your sure target is. Click on the create baked camera. Quick warning. Hey, it's kind of slow. Watch yourself. Don't bet against any open-ended straights and hit yes. And it takes a minute. Don't stop it. Don't force quit. It's just creating all of the calculations in a baked camera. Okay, so the camera is done. Here's what it's done. It's created a camera. It shut off the original camera, but we can always go back to it. But the cool thing is all of the keyframes are already added, and all we have to do is play it back. So check this out. Play this. Now, if we turn on the motion blur for our layers and the comp, So if you're using a simple setup, using uh, the sure target camera is probably okay, but if you're doing a really complex setup with inertia and all that stuff, the expressions can slow you down. So baking a camera is a great solution. But if you want to make a change, well, just delete the camera, turn your other camera back on, and uh, you know, make sure you shut off the motion blur because that could be a bit slow. And uh, just go through it and uh, play with your settings again, you know, tweak it until you get it right. But the cool thing is you're usually going to set your camera up and then focus on the design and getting the look right and then maybe some more camera tweaks at the end. So there's really a good workflow either way. Now a couple other minor features that are just going to be useful to using SureTarget is the fact that we've added some condition protection. So what if someone accidentally makes a layer not 3D? Well. Sure target says, whoa, whoa, what's going on? The layer needs to be 3D. What are you doing? And the cool thing is if we come down here, that target gets removed. Now the benefit of this is that you won't be able to break the expressions because if the expression breaks, it will you know, cause this whole conflict. So instead it removes it so that you don't have any broken expressions. That's something we, we worked on pretty hard and hopefully it should be rock solid. But here's the other thing. What if we try to add a layer that's not 3D? So this drop layer is not 3D. Say, so I want to add that. Again, it doesn't let you. So that way we don't create any conflicts. We'll make it 3D and then we can set it up again. Now with that said, if you should run into some expression error, we have the refresh expressions. So just click that and the expressions all get refreshed. And uh, for example, if I unhook these expressions. Now, it should never happen, but if it does, you don't have to worry about going in and turning them on. Just click on this refresh expressions and the plugin goes back through and makes sure everything that's on is on that should be. So, pretty cool stuff. So now that you know about the tools, here's the video that we showed on the blog and you can kind of see some of the various techniques integrated and uh, this gives you, you know, some other ideas 
on uh, what you can do. Now let's take a quick look at this earlier example with the montage because it's just kind of a cool way um, to set this up and you know you just might find it interesting. If you go over to this website called wordle.net you can enter in a bunch of keywords or you can just put a website like uh, Video Copilot and our blog has an RSS feed so if we hit submit it creates like a cool montage of, uh, of stuff and you can sit here for a few minutes and uh, click on this randomize button and it'll just create a bunch of different looks like this is just a very cool looking um, you know element and what you do is you click print now if you have the Adobe PDF uh, distiller you can actually print to a PDF with all of the vector work for this graphic so I'm not going to get into that but just look up a uh, Acrobat distiller or you know print to PDF and we'll just click OK and then we can save the file very cool now you can also play around with the different color schemes and uh, you know do some very interesting things I might even print this one on black okay so then if we come back to After Effects I'm going to import those two files the PDF files and then we'll create a new composition um, these settings look pretty good we'll hit OK and we'll take the montage we'll just use the one with the black background that's kind of cool and we'll rotate it here and it's a PDF so it's all vector and we turn on the continuous rasterization switch here we'll make it 3D and uh, then we're gonna add sure target so we'll add a null we'll go effect video copilot sure target we'll go through a little quicker here now that uh, you guys are familiar and instead of using text layers I'm gonna just create some null objects and we'll make the null 3D and we'll just move it to an area such as a uh, you know video and then we'll create another null object and we'll move this to you know uh, video effects and we'll make another null object and you can just duplicate them also video effects um, you know maybe even go into one of the really small ones timeline and uh, one more just for good measure and uh, you know it doesn't have to make sense but if you can get it to make sense even better so we've added these null objects and if we go to sure target we'll set up our target layers and uh, we'll just select the sure target name we'll hold down control click on these in order and we'll choose execute so that our targets are created and then we just need to animate the sure target from all of the targets check it out it just told me my layer needs to be 3d isn't that great my plugins telling me how to use it so we'll turn these on, we'll make them 3D. Again, we'll hold Control, Execute. There we go. And we're going to animate the sure target from one, move forward to two. And uh, then we'll pause for a moment. We'll move forward to three. We'll pause for a moment. And then we'll move forward to four. So here we are just kind of flying through. Now we can take the camera, it still works. We can, you know, move it closer. And uh, let's go ahead and start setting this up so that it kind of has an interesting look. Now, real quick, we'll set our montage to screen mode, then we'll duplicate it and we'll push it back in Z space and uh, maybe scale it up. Not too much and just lower the opacity a lot and this is just going to create a little bit of parallax as uh, as this camera moves around so just uh, push that back a little bit more okay so here's the other thing I'm going to shut our nulls off so that we don't see them in our project click on sure target let's set it to ease out and that way we can turn on the inertia. We'll set it to maybe five and uh, you know, six. We'll turn the camera roll on just a little bit, maybe 0.75.
And we're also going to use the dolly. So we'll enable that. Remember, the dolly allows us to get closer. So video is kind of small there. But if we turn up dolly number one, we can really get into that target. But then when it gets to the next target, it's back out where it was. But again, I want to go into that one. But it's a little bit bigger, so we don't necessarily need to go in as far. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll make one that just comes out wide. Um, you know, not entirely wide, but just sort of right there onto the timeline. And then the last one, we'll just keep it kind of wide. Okay, let's take a look. So, you know, I can play around with the spacing of the animation, so maybe it's a little quicker um, during different parts. And we can also turn on the motion blur, um, but I might want to bake the camera first. Now, one other quick tip, if you create text and maybe the text is off to one side, you can change the position of the text by using the pan behind tool. And what this does is moves the anchor point, which offsets essentially where the text is in relationship to the target because the target is basically that point and so now we can go from here you know off to the side or we could you know put it down um, you know in the bottom here you know, if we turned on you can see we're focused specifically on that target you know we can maybe put this down uh, you know the bottom here or something like that so all you need to do is use the pan behind tool to position your text or you know refine where your target is looking now back in this example I want to go ahead and turn on the motion blur so what I'm gonna do is bake the camera so we'll execute the baked camera but first I want to make sure that I set it up to only this area so we'll hit N and bring that over we'll click on create baked camera can be slow okay waiting and waiting got it so there's our baked camera we'll go ahead we'll turn on the motion blur turn on the motion blur for the comp and uh, let's take a look okay so pretty cool maybe a little uh, depth of field maybe some particles um, you know, maybe a little wiggle just to add to uh, the life and the movement, but uh, just a pretty cool way to use sure target. Remember, the camera can be used to capture all sorts of creative things. It doesn't just have to be a big room with you know particles flying around. Um, you know, it can be though. So either way, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Download Sure Target 2, install it, have fun, and uh, be sure to check out Video Copilot. We've got a great blog, our forums, got a lot of great information. And of course, check out our great products. We've got Riot Gear, Action Essentials, and uh, plenty of great tools to uh, help you with your video productions. And uh, it also helps support the site so uh, you know we can continue to make uh, free plugins and free cool tools like Sure Target 2. Anyway, I am Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.